So I grew up in Pennsylvania and not too far from Hawk Mountain in the eastern uh, part of the state. And that was big up there. And, and it's the original hawk, hawk migration site, uh, hawk watch site in the United States. That was, that was the founding hawk, hawk watch site. And I used to go there every year. I, I would arrange ahead of time and, and drive there and spend an entire day there. And then when I moved down here, I kept driving up there until one day I heard about this little hawk watch site on Afton Mountain. And I thought I'll go up and check it out. And lo and behold, I found lots of raptors. And it's not quite as high in elevation as Pennsylvania. So the birds are a little higher than normal, but they're there. They're there by the hundreds and thousands. So that got, got me hooked to stay, to help, and collect, collect more data. We're called Rockfish Gap Hawk Watch because we are located here in the Rockfish, right next to Rockfish Valley to the east, in the Shenandoah Valley to the west. And this is Rockfish Gap, where Route Highway 64 goes through the Blue Ridge Mountains. This is part of the Appalachian Mountains, and more specifically, the Blue Ridge Mountains. And most of these hawks like to follow the Appalachian Mountains when they fly south. And up north, the Appalachian Mountains are, are much wider. But down here, they narrow, so they concentrate the hawks in this area, which is why we're a good location to view hawks. And then it sort of widens a little bit as it goes down toward Roanoke in that area. So we're fortunate that we have a 180 degree view and we can see these hawks and hopefully we can count all of them. The whole point of the Hawk Watch is multifold, but the primary goal is to, to take part in citizen science. So we have volunteers that come here to help us find the raptors and count the raptors. And we do this as part of a, a large network of other, up to 200 other Hawk Watch sites in North America. Some have a couple hundred birds a year, some have 100,000 plus a year. It depends on location. But all, that, all of us from all these different Hawk Watch sites, the point is to monitor this population every year and year after year at the same time in the same methodology so that we can see changes in population. And if we see changes in their population, that, then that's an indicator of our environment because uh, they're at the top of the food chain. If they start getting uh, low in population, then there's something wrong with what they eat. They can't find enough food. And um, it's usually in, in due to habitat loss. So our main goal is to monitor the population to learn about their changes in population. And you can't do that in the summer or spring because when they go to their breeding grounds, they just disperse. And their whole goal in the breeding area when they nest is to find places to hide and raise their young in safety. So they, you can't count them or find them. But once a year, they migrate south through these geographic areas in large concentrations. That's where we can get a good consistent count of the population. And part of our goal is to uh, make people aware of what's happening over, over their eyes, over their homes every, in the fall every day. They, a lot of these people driving down here have no idea that there are 8,000 hawks just flew over their heads. And where they're going, no one, no one can believe that, that they fly from the Arctic Circle down to Brazil every fall over the ocean. So we welcome anyone to come up to a hawk watch site. It's not just me and my uh, other hawk watchers that do this. We welcome the public to come up. They can help find the hawks. They can learn to count the hawks if they want. Or they can just sit down and have a picnic and enjoy the day and, and, and just listen to what happens. And a lot of people like to just bring their family up and wait for us to find the hawks and then they can find them and watch them and enjoy them and appreciate them and hopefully go home and think about them more and maybe it would impact their, some of their decisions they make in the future or what, what they decide to do. We tell people we see up to 14 different species of hawks and falcons and eagles. Um, a couple of them are very rare, like the Swainson's hawk, which is a western bird. We might see one every couple years. But our main birds are the red-tailed hawks and the red-shouldered hawks and kestrels that we all know as we're driving along the road. And then the osprey and the bald eagles migrate through here. And then the sharp shins and cooper's hawks are some of the other common birds. We count everything we see, actually. So we see a lot of waterfowl migrating as well. Uh, and loons will fly, often fly overhead on big groups from the Great Lakes. 
uh, toward the coast. But there are other animals that migrate too, like monarch butterflies. We all know they fly to their special place in the southwest U.S. or in Mexico for the winter. And they fly through here on days in late September by the hundreds, and we'll count them, and we keep track of that every year. And then dragonflies. Uh, some dragonflies migrate in large groups, and if we can, we'll count them if they don't, if they don't bother our raptor count. Um, like this morning, we had so many, so many dragonflies that we couldn't even, we had a hard time even uh, seeing the raptors because the dragonflies filled the sky. And there are places that, there are places that uh, can see those big groups of dragonflies on radar.